I know this video sounds like it's clickbait, but it's not. In 2019, I was able to achieve 77% return. I know, 77% sounds just crazy. And I couldn't really believe it myself. When I was a kid, I would always go around my house and I would try to find all the little coins that I could find and I would exchange them for larger bills for my parents. I mean, I would never really get them back, but that's for another video. Not that this had anything to do with this video, but I feel like just sharing that with you. If you're new to the channel, my name is Shakib. If you're not new to the channel, my name is still Shakib. In 2019, I was able to achieve 77%, and I think that's just crazy to think about. On average, S&P 500 has a return rate of anywhere between 7 to 10%. So that really means that I got seven years worth of return in just one year. Yeah, let that sink in. That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? I don't want to take all the credit for myself and say that I'm this fantastic investor and that I was able to achieve that. I think I just got in the right time and I just really got lucky. That's all there is to it. In 2017, I was in college and that's when I started getting into investing. I had a lot of free time because I was working jobs like Amazon, Uber, and at some point I even tried opening my own uh, business, but it didn't work out so well. During that period of time, I was listening and reading a lot of books. One book that stood out to me the most was by Tony Robbins, Money Master the Game. You see, when I was growing up, my parents never really went over about investing and stuff like that, but that book has opened a lot of doors for me because I finally understood what stocks are, bonds, and so on. After reading that book, I felt like I learned so much about investing, but I feel like still, I wasn't at a point where I can go and just buy some sort of stock. First of all, I didn't know where I could buy one. I think that was a mystery. Also, I had questions such as, can I sell it at any given time? And so with all these questions in mind, the next month in my college, I was actually luckily paired up with a mentor who knew a lot about this sort of stuff. So I started constantly asking questions, whether I could sell the stock at any given time or what stocks could I buy, which ones are actually available to buy. He told me just to buy a stock. It doesn't matter which one because the worst thing that could happen, you're going to lose $100. But that would be the greatest lesson that you could potentially learn. I ended up buying S&P 500 by Vanguard. At the time, it was $216. So the second stock that I bought was a real estate stock. And the reason I bought it was because at that time, I just learned about dividends. And I thought, wow, that's just so cool. They literally pretty much are giving you passive money and it's cash as well. So I got really interested in that and I ended up buying a few real estate stocks. I don't want to drag this video for too long, but I feel like there's one point that I really want to get across is how much money do you need to get started? And I think if you ask anybody, most people think, you know, you probably need thousands and thousands of dollars to get started. But in reality, all you really need is anywhere between one to five dollars because there's a lot of, there are actually a lot of companies out there that have stocks anywhere between one to five dollars. And if you kick it up a notch to a hundred dollars, there'll be plenty companies that you could buy stocks with that much money. In order to give you a concrete uh, action to take, what I would suggest buying are two different stocks. I think you should buy an S&P 500 stock or any ETF stock and you should just buy a stock that is of your choice, a company that you support or you think that you like. And the reason I'm saying this is because you'll see how the market is performing and you can see how your investment is performing against the market. And over the long term, you can see whether your choices are actually really good or your choices are not so good. Easy as that. Another question that I had constantly was where can I buy stocks? I always thought that in order to buy stocks, you need to know somebody who is really important and they could hook you up and would buy new stocks. But in reality, it's not that serious at all. Literally nowadays, you can go on the app store and you can easily buy stocks. And one of the cool parts about 2020 and actually a few years has been now that a lot of stocks that you buy, are you buy and you pay for the price of the stock and not for the commission. It used to be where you had to pay anywhere from $7 and up for just buying the stocks, just for the transaction fees. So I think we're very lucky in 2020 and it's been actually a few years where we can buy them without commissions. You might be wondering, so which app should you go with? So I personally use Robinhood for my investing, but I know plenty of people who use Webull. And I think if you go with either of those two, you should be perfectly fine. Honestly, don't limit yourself just to only those two. There's plenty out there. If you just do a simple Google search, you can find one. And now we're gonna move to the most important part of this video, which is probably the reason why you clicked onto this video. 
which is what companies did I actually have in 2019? Let's go and jump right into that. So the first stock is Groupon and I have one share of Groupon, which is because I invited my girlfriend and that's $3.05 of profit. Okay, not bad, good start. And then second stock is gonna be Ford. I have two shares of Ford. I bought each one of them at $11.40 and I am down $6.57, which is 28%. Let's go to the next one, GE. I have two shares of GE. I bought each share at $29 and now I'm down $32 or 55%, which is pretty bad. Let's go next, Cisco. I have one share of Cisco and I bought it at $31. I'm actually up with Cisco, $16 or 51% in total. Next one is Six Flags. I have two shares of Six Flags and uh, the total return is actually negative $13 or negative 15%. Next one is ORC. It's a real estate investment. Let's look at this. Yep, it's a finance company which engages investment in real estate, mortgage backed and securities. Okay, and I bought at nine dollars and one cent, and I am down thirty-seven dollars or thirty-two percent. Let's go to the next one, Siri, and I have twenty-four shares of Siri. I bought at five dollars and forty-one cent each, and now I'm up forty dollars or thirty-one percent. The next one is PG, Procter & Gamble. I bought four shares, each one at $86.36. And now I actually have gained $159 or 46%. Next one is Microsoft. And we have four shares of Microsoft and we have gained pretty much $400 or 119%. You see, that's what we're talking about. Next one is Apple. I bought three shares of Apple at $162. I've gained $469 or 96%. That's not bad at all. Next one is Berkshire Hathaway. Wow, this is actually the first time I was able to pronounce that name because it's just not working for me. So I got six <laughs> shares and I've gained $204 or 17%. And then the next one, we're actually getting pretty close to the reason why I was able to get 77% return. I got six shares of Vanguard S&P 500. It was that, that was the stock that I actually mentioned at the beginning of the video. This was the first stock that I gotten. And the average price was $240 and I've gained $390 or 27%. And and the reason why I was actually able to get 77% is because of this next stock, which is AMD. And I bought 73 shares at $11.83, actually 86 cents. And I've gained $2,771 and that's 320%. Yes, I said 320%. I didn't say dollars, I said percent. Right, that's a deal, right? That's a bit, right? One thing that I wanted to share with you was at the beginning when you get started, there's just so many stocks and you're always wondering, wait, wait, how can I find out about all these different stocks? It's actually not as hard as you think. And the game that I was playing inside my head to actually get familiar with a lot of different stocks is every single time that I go to a store and I buy a product or something, I try to look it up online whether that company is actually being traded publicly, which means that you can buy stocks or their shares. So. Now, every time you see a logo, if you go ahead and look it up on Robinhood or Webull or on Google, you'll find the stock and you can see how much it costs. And if you play that game with yourself long enough, I think you'll pretty much get to know most companies that are out there. If you can take anything out of this video is just get started. And what you should do is buy one S&P 500 so that you can see how the market is performing. And two, just buy a stock of your choice, a company that you believe or you think is gonna do well long term. And in order to actually get started with all of this, what you really need to do is set yourself a budget. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video. I'm going to show you an app that I made for myself where I budget all the spendings that I have 
And I feel like that was one of the reasons I was able to actually get started with investing because I managed my money right away. If there's anything you didn't understand in this video, such as what is S&P 500 or what is an ETF, well, just leave a comment down below and I'll address your question by making a complete separate video for it. My name is Shakib and I'll see you on the next one where we'll be creating a budget together. There's a lot of stock that costs anywhere between one to five dollars. If you not get up a bunch, whoa, what does that even mean? Hundred or two hundred dollars, you could pretty much buy fifty percent of the market. Whoa, you cannot buy fifty percent of the market for two hundred dollars, but you know what I meant. You, you know what I meant. My parents never really thought me. Thought, baby, I'm not. I'm not a thought. That's why they didn't thought me. <laughs> thought out. You keep, and it was nice financing with you. It was nice to finance you. That does not sound good. Sounds creepy. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like 